The Navy announces that Wake Island is probably captured by the enemy. And now it is disclosed that fewer than 400 Marines held Wake Island for at least 14 days against heavy Japanese attacks. The Marines had 12 fighter planes and a small quantity of weapons. They were commanded by a 38-year-old Marine Major, James P.S. Devereux. They sank one Japanese light cruiser and three destroyers. They held out against 13 raids. Hello everyone and welcome back to the World War II Solitaire Board Game Channel. Long time no play. First of all, uh, this is the first time that I actually record in my RV. As you know, I'm out uh, on a job assignment, so I'm limited to recording here on my RV table. And I actually didn't connect my microphone because it adds another layer because I don't have a wireless one. So then I have this adds another layer of difficulty for me because then I have to make sure that the cord from the microphone isn't in the way of the video. And it's just a whole thing. So to be honest, recording in the RV is difficult enough. So you're going to have to do with this. I'm guessing the audio might be, it might sound like I'm speaking inside of a can <laughs> because I kind of am. Uh, this is my, the RV is my little can. But hopefully the audio will be okay and hopefully you will enjoy this video. Today I am going to play Islands of the Damned, Wake Islands and Peleliu. So Islands of the Dam um, includes two games. There is Given Up for Dead, which is Wake Island, and then there is Utmost Savagery, which is uh, Peleliu Island. And both of these games play differently and I like the, I really like the combination of them. Because this one is a state of siege engine kind of game where you have to defend Wake Island against uh, against the overwhelming Japanese uh, Imperial Japanese Navy forces. And in the Peleliu one, you're the one that's attacking the island with your Marines, trying to take the island of Peleliu, which we all know was a very bloody battle. So I really like that combination of two island games in the Pacific. Uh, one where you're the attacker, one where you're the defender. I think that's a genius kind of combination. And these two games are actually really good. I mean, both of them, there are, you know, on a paper map with standard components, uh, nothing really impressive, but they play really nice and they're really fun to play over and over again. And in my collection of solo games, I have hundreds of World War II solo games and some of them just collect dust. This is one of my first games that I owned, but they still come out, uh, you know, time after time because I want to play them again. So that's a really good uh, rating for one of my solo games. I know it's a good one if I, if I want to play it over and over again. Uh, so there's two reasons why I'm doing this uh, playthrough, uh, because I have actually featured this game and uh, the Peleliu game before, but the designer has since changed up Quite a lot of rules for both of the games you will find this uh, you know rule exceptions on against the odds magazine's website and specifically for this game for uh, given up or dead uh, there is a uh, garrison track which you track with the marine marker or the civilians drafted marker depending on if you have drafted civilians when you're at eight or lower uh, at the garrison track so before the marine tracker of course it starts on 20 which is the max and then if it goes down to one nothing happens so you can play your whole game like that but now what happens is that if it goes down to one you lose the game if you are at eight or lower you can um, draft civilians and you roll a d6 or maybe it's two i can't remember the rules and you know you will increase your garrison track by that number uh, so basically, you know, if you get too low here with your marine track, you're gonna want to recruit or risk the, that the game ends. And it's not gonna end in your favor, obviously, because the game will be lost. Uh, so that's that's one of the rule improvements. Uh, there are some other few minor rules. Again, you can find, uh, you can find the errata uh, information on the ATO website. Uh, but anyway, let's get playing and let's start with uh, the setup. Okay, so first of all, you have your Marine and Civilians Drafted Marker. You put that on the garrison track here on number 20. You have a bunch of fire and smoke markers and just put those, you know, nearby. 
you're gonna need some dice you can have up to you know 10 dice it's gonna be needed because the japanese chips will fire a lot of uh, a lot of rounds towards you and then you have your second uh, invasion attempt counters and your first invasion attempt counters you're just gonna put those face down so you can't really see what's what and put them on the on the tracks which you see here And then we're done. Okay, so let's start. Again, we have the first uh, evasion attempt and the second evasion attempt. So let me get out my sequence of play over here. There we go. So first we start with the discovery phase. In the first uh, evasion attempt, we rolled 2d6. In the second one, we rolled 3d6. But now we're at the first. So roll 2d6 and select the highest number, which in this case is gonna be three. And that's how many counters we're gonna reveal. Let's see, that's the first. I'll place my die there to remember how many uh, I have left to draw. And first we have a fuel depot one. So fuel is needed to launch aircrafts into the combat air patrol. And if we are hit at the fuel depot, we lose one fuel uh, instead of losing one garrison. If we have no fuel, instead we lose one garrison. And then we have our first Japanese ship which has a strength value 3, which you can see at the top. And we're all a 2, so his placement is going to be here in the second uh, staging area. And then we have another fuel. And then we're done with the discovery phase, so we go to the movement phase. And we roll for this ship. And roll a 4, and we see with a roll of 4, he's going to go to this side, because here we have 4, 5, 6, goes there. One, two, three goes to that area. And then we have the Japanese attack phase, but these Japanese ships can't attack until, until they're in a zone with one of these numbers on it. And then we have the shore battery phase, but we cannot attack him because he's out of reach. So we have the wildcat phase, but we have no wildcats to launch from the airfield. And then we just restart, so we do it all again. And roll a one and a six. So it's going to be a six now. We want to draw as many of these as possible before we end the first invasion attempt. Because for each and one of them we will get one DP in the end of the game. So we have another ship. And note that there are numbers beneath these counters. And it belongs to the 30th VD. And if you have two ships of the same division they will go together so you won't have to um, you won't have to roll to see where he starts he rolls a five so he goes over here and let's see what else we get we got more fuel a lot of fuel and we got ammo in the ammo dump and we can use that to increase our hit chance when firing with uh, shore guns more fuel and more ammo and finally, we have a wildcat, which we place in the airfield. So this is the best wildcat. This one has a attack value 3, and then the rest of them... Come on, focus. Focus! And then the rest of them has an attack value of uh, 2. So there's different attack values to them. And yes, then we go to the movement phase, we roll. You will roll for the closest ships first in any order you want. We start with this one, and he rolls a six, so he will go down here. And then this one, six, so he will go down here. And then we have the Japanese attack phase. So this guy here, oh, none of them are in range, and my shore guns aren't either. So we go from the shore battery phase to the wildcat phase. We pay one fuel. To launch our wildcat in the combat air patrol the wildcat needs to be in the combat air patrol before he attacks japanese ships however if there is any japanese in the shore areas they can attack them immediately from the airfield and don't have to go to the combat air patrol box and that's the end of that we go now to the next turn we roll a one and a two 
low numbers are generally good because it lets you um, you know build up your strength so now we have a, a battleship Ubadi which is in its own division and we roll a two he starts over here and Japanese movement phase so we start with this one rolls a two so he will go over here and next rolls a five so he will go over here and then the U-body will go over here okay so now we have the first Japanese attack phase where they will actually fire and this guy is gonna fire and his combat value is three so he gets to fire with three dice the number here in his area is a six and that means he needs a six to be able to actually uh, hit so there's a different numbers uh, you know you have to look at the island hit location and usually i would i would scan this and show it to you but you can see here at on a one shore battery one on a two it's the headquarters on a three it's the airfield and so on so those are the numbers you're going to go for, you know after normally if i had my computer and everything at hand i would scan this and pop it up on the screen but you're just going to have to see what happens so he rolls three dice and he needs a six he does not get a six Next guy also rolls three dice and he also needs a six to hit. And it's a miss. And Yubari here, the number four, he is not firing yet. So then we go to the Japanese, sorry, the shore battery phase. So we can fire with these now. And the first invasion attempt will end whenever i have six bo uh, six chips in either ember's glory box or ember's disgrace box so they need two hits to actually sink and if they sink they go to the ember's glory box and i will receive vp for them but if i only hit them in the first invasion attempt they will be attempt they will be, get shocked and retreat and end up in the ember's disgrace box most of these ships will come back in the second invasion attempt so you actually kind of don't want to only damage them you really want to actually kill them because if you only damage them they will come back if you kill them you get the vp so my tactic is generally trying to fire upon them with the short guns if i hit send my wildcats to finish them off okay we'll try uh, first we use so we have three short guns right there's one with the red he can only fire at these boxes with red color and then there's this one with white color he can only fire at these white boxes and then we have the first one here he can fire all of them so we'll start with this one and he will fire at this guy over here and he will fire with three dice he needs also a six to hit since he's in a six area and i roll a six so that's a really good uh, hit and now we actually actually have to check if we indeed damage him so now we need to roll his combat value or higher which is three we need to roll a three or higher to damage him and roll a five so he is uh, on fire and normally they would keep combating and retreat but not now since it's the first uh, invasion attempt so I'll fire with this gun now at him. I still need a six to hit. And I roll a four, a three, and a one. So that's not enough to hit. I need a six. So I am gonna go ahead and send this wildcat. That's the end of the of the short guns mission. Uh, I'll send my wildcat out. And then in the wildcat phase, you have to pay fuel to launch the next ones. And then after that, you will do combat. Okay, so combat uh, works like this with wildcats. The ship will get the chance to um, defend himself. And how that works is you take the combat value and roll that uh, amount of dice. And any six will lower the combat value of the wildcat by one. So if he wasn't on fire now, he would get to roll three dice every six would uh, decrease his combat value by one and they could effectively make him worthless with a combat value of zero however we have the fire marker on him and the fire marker gives him a minus two in combat value smoke if it decreases would be minus one so instead of rolling three dice 
he will only get to defend with one die now. So we roll for the Japanese AA, and he rolls a six, which decreases my combat value with one. So the Wildcat goes from three dice to two. Now I get to attack. I need to roll his combat value or higher. His combat value is currently one because he has a minus two. So it's a guaranteed hit. And I roll a four and a one and this ship has been effectively sunk. And the Wildcat returns to the airfield. And then we are done with this phase. It's actually we have a recovery and retreat phase. In the first at, uh, invasion attempt they retreat if they're damaged. In the second one you decrease fires to smoke and smokes to nothing. Okay, so we go into the next turn world. Discovery phase. We're all a two and a three, so there's going to be a total of three markers revealed. And we get a new ship, and it's actually the same division as this guy. Uh, but since he's taken out, we have to roll for his placement. We roll a three. Goes over here. And then we have Yankee Grit. Grit can be used to reroll the damage dice of the Wildcats. It can also be uh, used to save white cats from the airfield if the elf airfield is fired upon and yeah there's some more stuff you can do with it we're gonna find out all of that stuff more fuel okay so we're having a good time here with the japanese ships not getting overwhelmed so that's good uh, we go to the movement phase and we're all for the ship here first he rolls a five so he'll go over here and then the body and the body rolls a one so we'll go over here and then we have the Japanese uh, attack phase, so we roll three dice for this one. You always go with the ships that are closest first. Oh, wow! <laughs> he wants revenge for his buddy. He fired... Uh, oh, should have moved him first. He fired uh, three sixes, three hits. Uh, and five, so he did find those here. And he only needs a five to hit, actually, because he's in a five place now, so... Let's roll to see where the damage happens. Roll a 3-3 three, three, and a 1. And the 1 will attack a shore battery L, which is this one. So we put a fire marker on him. And the, the, let's see, the 3s will be airfield hits. So that's not good at all, because we can spend a grit to save the wildcat. But then... The second hit will get him anyway. So the question is what we should do. Yeah, I think we have to do it. So uh, I, I just spend the grit and then the second one I unfortunately lose the best wildcat. So this is uh, rather unlucky. And then we have the Ubari. And the Ubari rolls four dice because his combat value is uh, four. And he gets one hit. These dice are from D-Day dice, by the way. That's why they're red over here. They're MG uh, dice. And he rolls a 1. So, since this cannot take any more damage, we have to reduce the garrison track by 1. Okay. That was a horrible, horrible turn for me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fire... Hmm. I'll fire at you, buddy, with these guns first. I get to roll 3 dice. I need a 6 or higher to hit. And I miss. I'll fire with this one on the bolt here. And I get two hits. So that's rather lucky. I still need to roll his combat value or higher to hit. So we need a three or higher. And roll a six and a two. So we have one hit. And then this short gun gets rolled one die. That's three minus two because of the fire. So one die. And he rolls a free, so that's a miss. Okay, so I'm gonna send my wildcat out. And I need to roll, let's see, one die to see if he defends. He needs a six to defend. And he rolls a five, so no defense. And again, it's a guaranteed hit because I will have two dice. And I need to roll his combat value, which is three minus two. So a one is sufficient, and I roll five and six. So we have sunk another ship. And the Wildcat goes back to the airfield. 
Okay, that is the end of that uh, phase, or actually we have one thing left, recovery and retreat phase. So this one will go from fire to smoke, from minus two to minus one. And then we're again back in a new turn. Let's roll 2d6, we roll a five and a four, so we have five markers this time. We have one from the 30th division, so he goes with his buddy. We have one from the PB division. PBs are a little bit special. Roll a free so you start here. They can only take one point of damage. So one hit is enough to sink the PB boats. It's a special rule for them. And 29th, which we just took out one from. And he rolls a free, so he have to re-roll. Um, because there can't be more than one of the same. Uh, there can't be ships from two different divisions in the same box. A lot of boats. Oh, and here we have a strong boat with a combat value of four. So definitely want to take him out. And let's see the last marker. Ah, it's going to be from the 29th. So he goes with his buddy. Okay, so. First of all, we have the Japanese movement phase. Two and... Okay, why am I rolling two dice? I have no idea. Okay, so let's start with... Your body's the closest, so he rolls a five. So he goes over here. And then this guy rolls a two, so he goes over here. And then these two guys, a one. What else over there? And... 30th division goes over here and finally the PB was a 5 so he goes over here and now we have the dreaded Japanese attack phase this is gonna hurt the Yubari will fire four dice he needs now a five or higher to hit and he rolls two fives so that's two hits he rolls five and six five is the ammo dump so we remove one of these Six is going to be these red gums, so we put a fire marker on it. Okay, that's not too good. I actually, I'm not going to fire at the Yubari for this round, because I will most likely just, if I hit, I'm just going to be one damage, you know, because these are on fire and this is smoked, and these can't fire on anyone. So I'm going to go ahead and not fire, and then I will spend one fuel counter to launch the wildcat that I have on the airfield. And then we go straight to the recovery and retreat phase. So remove this smoke marker and change this one from a fire to a smoke. Okay, so we go to the next turn. We roll 2d6 as usual. We roll a 4 and a 6. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah. Uh, here we got a ship which combat value number is in a bracket. And that is because it's a transporter, so he can't fire. And row four starts here. And next marker is ammo. I need more wildcats. Oh yeah, so when I started the video, I said that there's two reasons why I'm doing this. And I think I only gave the first reason. Uh, that's the new rules. And uh, well, the second reason uh, is that I there is a new expansion for this and I actually managed to buy it online or I got it actually for free from a very friendly fellow from the UK who I talked to on Board Game Geek. So he sent me an expansion. So I'm also gonna play this with the expansion pack to show you how that works. So stay tuned for that. Haven't received it yet though, but I thought it would be fun to play the basic game first and then introduce the expansion pack. Okay, so we have the Japanese movement. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of die rolling, but there usually is in the State of Siege engine games. So we start with the U-Body. There are also two, so he's going to go over here. And I'll just take them in turn. So the transporter first goes here. And number five, let's see here. And number five. So, there's two ways that you can lose. The first is getting the garrison track down to one. The second way to lose, if, if the ships go in the, these shorelines 
and the comet value of them is higher than your garrison track number, you also lose immediately. One thing to note though is that the battleships, the big battleships with which has this marker, which I can't remember the name of in English, they can't go to the shore because um, they're too big. So that's what that marker means. Okay, next movement is the PB. And the PB moves over here. And then we have the transporter and the transporter moves over here. Okay, so now it is time for them to attack and this is gonna be bad. There's so many of them. Your body will fire with four dice. He only needs a four to hit. And he gets three hits. Okay, maybe I should have started firing the four. He hits three, four, and five. So three is the airfield. There's no plane there, so I lose one garrison. Four is the fuel depot. Five is the ammo dump. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. And then this guy rolls four dice. He needs a six or higher to hit. And he gets, I can't believe how lucky the Japanese are. He gets two hits, a one and a two and a one I don't really need because I was going to use those guns, but they're on fire. And the two is the HQ. The HQ decreased my garrison value by two, so my garrison is now at 16. And then we have these guys, and they fire three each. That's a total of six. So I'm going to go ahead and roll six dice. They need a six or higher to hit. Six or higher. It's not going to be higher. Ooh, one hit only. That's good. One out of six. And it's a one. Can't take more hits, so it goes down from 16 to 15. And these guys also roll six dice. Six or higher to hit. And no hits. Okay, that's lucky. And the other guys here are not in range and the transporter will not fire. Okay, so now it's time for me to defend. And I'm, ha I'm gonna have to get to you, buddy. Okay, so this one fires. F okay, I'll fire with him first. He fired two dice since he has smoke, so he goes from three to two. I need a roll of four or higher, and I'm actually gonna spend the ammo because now I only need a three or higher to hit. It's a minus one each time you spend ammo. I roll a three and a six, so that's two hits. His combat value is four, so I need to roll a four or higher to actually damage him. Ah, two threes. Ugh, that's bad. I have to get him, so I'll spend another ammo point here. I will fire one die. I need to roll a f uh, three or higher. And I roll four. I need a four or higher to hit. Ah! I roll a three. Ugh. Okay. These guns will fire three dice. I need a six or higher to hit that ship. And I roll a six, so that is a hit. Up to damage, I need a four or higher. And I need a. F I got a four. Okay, that's good. Let's so send the wildcat. He will defend now. Four minus two. He has a combat value of two, so he gets two die dice, and he rolls effectively with one of them. So he defends against one of my attack dice. This guy's attack value is only two, so I get one die left to roll. And to damage him now, I need a roll of two or higher. Is four minus two, that's two. Okay, let's hope I don't roll a one. Five, so I managed to sink this ship. And he's as strong as the Yubari with a combat value of four. So that was actually a good, good day. And that is not the end of the round now. We have the recovery and retreat phase. So we'll remove this smoke marker and decrease this fire to smoke. And we're all 2d6 again. A three and a three, so it's gonna be three markers. Another wildcat. Uh, another ship with four in combat value. Spawns in the fourth column. And lastly, we have fuel. Okay, so Japanese movement phase, and remember you skip it for this guy since he can't reach it, but we'll still roll to see if he goes to the side. Roll a two and that's nothing. Two, uh, let's see here. Two and three is forward, four and five is forward. One would be to the side and six would be to the side. So we just go this way for all of them. One, three, 
a one, a six, and a three. Okay, so now we have the Japanese firing phase, and this is going to hurt your body. Four, he needs a four higher. And he gets three hits. Nasty, nasty business. A four, a three, and a one. So the one is this one again, so it turns into a fire. A three is going to be the airfield. I'll spend the grit to save that one. And a four is the fuel depot. Ah. And then we have these guys. They will fire six dice together. Zero, six dice. These five or higher. And that's three hits. And the hits are two. Two, which is two less on the garrison drag. Five, which is the fuel dump. And three, which is the airfield. I lose a plane because I don't have grit to save him. And then six dies from this one. And he needs five or higher. So we have one, two, three hits again. Okay. Things could be better. I think I made a mistake. Uh, one is this one. So I take a hit to the garrison because he's on fire. Two is the HQ. So I go from 12 to 10. And three is gonna be the airfield. I lose my last plane. Okay, this is this is very a very lost game to be honest. The PB fires two, and he rolls a six, so he gets one hit. The lucky bastard and five, which is the ammo dump. Yeah, this is lost. I should have tried to get rid of some of the weaker ships into the retreat box. So I got a little bit too, you know, this is push your luck and I pushed my luck too far. Okay, so we go to the firing phase and we fire, the red one will fire at uh, your body with three dice. He needs a four or lower to hit, sorry, four or higher. And I roll one hit. To hit, I need to roll a four or higher and I roll a five, so he's actually on fire now. And then I fire with this one, I need uh four or higher and i roll a two so that's a damn shame because he's gonna get away this one fires three dice at this ship needs a five or higher and i roll only threes so okay so now we get to the wildcat phase no wildcats uh, cats remaining unfortunately so then we go to the recover and retreat phase so the body will retreat into the um, emperor's disgrace box and we will reduce the fire to a smoke here and that's the end of the of the turn and we now go to roll for new uh, invasion markers we roll a six and a five so the six is one two three four five six so that's a lot of hopefully we get something good i don't know i don't even think there's any wildcats remaining in um in these markers i, I think i'm all a lot of wildcats unfortunately Japanese movement face a four. I roll this one is larger, so easy for you guys to see. And Japanese attack face, and again, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt badly. Uh, these guys will fire six. They need a four or higher to hit. They roll two hits. That's not too bad. So two hits, and it's a six and a one. Six is this one. No, oh, okay. So when you roll six, if they're in a white area, it's the white guns. If they're in a red area, a six is the red guns. Okay, and then we have these guys. Oof. I made a horrible mistake. They need a four or higher, they get four hits. So four hits will go to uh, first is let's see this one. So that's a garrison loss. Four is the fuel depot. And six is this one, so the first one make them catch on fire, and the second one decrease my garrison value by one. So I'm at eight now, 
So I could uh, recruit civilians. If you recruit civilians, you lose 20 VP, so you really don't want to do it. But when you're at 8 or lower, you can. However, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so we still have the PB gets 2 die. And he rolls a 5 and a 3, so that's 1 hit. And the hit is a 4, which is the fuel depot. I care about the fuel depot because I don't need fuel. And then we have, yeah, he's not going to fire because he's a transport ship. Okay, so now I get to return fire, but there's not much I can do. The red one will fire at this one, so he needs to roll a uh, 4 higher. Ha, <laughs> 2. And the white one here is going to fire at the one I'll spend some ammo, or it's, I'm going to be done for. I need a uh, 3 or higher. <laughs> roll 2. And this one will fire at that one. I'll spend more ammo because otherwise I'm just going to be dead. A 3 or higher, and I roll a 3. I need a uh, 3 or higher to damage him. <laughs> I roll a 1, so that's no damage. It's a miss. I can't spend janky grit now to actually uh, re-roll my damage die. So usually I wouldn't do it, but now I'm just fighting desperately for my life. So I'm going to do it. And I roll a 2, so it's... It did not help me. And you can only spend one per like battle per you know per guns. So yeah, I'm pretty much hmm, done for. Uh, alright, alright, alright. We get to recovery phase, we get to do this. And I think actually now that there is no choice left for me but to recruit. Because next turn, these guys are going to go here, and these guys are going to go here. So they're going to have a combine, combined value of 12, which is going to be more than my garrison value, which is at 8. So if I don't recruit the civilians now, I'm going to, you know, lose the game. So I flipped the garrison marker from his marine side to the civilian's drafted side. I get to roll 2d6, and this happens, you know, you can only do this in the recovery and retreat phase. So... I roll these two and a combined value is going to be how much garrison I gain. So I need to gain more than uh, one, two, three, four. So I need to roll more than four it's, or it's not going to be enough. And I roll a seven. So that, that's a good roll. That's a bad roll. So seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm up to 15. And we go to the new turn. And I roll a four and a three. So it's going to be four markers. Fuel. Grit. And I actually got a wildcat. And a PB ship, so he goes with his buddy. Okay, uh, this is gonna be bad. Let's roll for the movement of the Japanese ships. A one. Oh, lucky me. They didn't go to shore, they went to the side. That's a lucky roll. And a six. Oh man, same for these guys. Are you kidding me? And then the PB boats. Roll a four, so they are gonna go over here. And then the transport ship, five, so he's going here. That's my dog barking, I don't know if you can hear him. And then the, he goes over here. Okay, so it's time for them to fire. Let's start with the PB boats. They need a four or higher. It's two plus two, and they only get one hit. And it's a six, so it's gonna be these guns. And then these two guys, and they have a combined value of six. So they will roll six dice, and they need a roll of four. And they get two hits, still not bad, not too bad for me. And they get a one and a six, so it's gonna be this area. And then I'll lose one from the fire. It's already on fire, I mean. And then next ships, four or higher, so we have, ooh, five hits. That's not too good for me. Uh, one, which is this, so I lose a garrison marker. Three, which is the airfield, I can't, okay, I can spend the grit. Good. Uh, and then five, which is the ammo dump. And two sixes, so the first one, oh, let's see, it's going to be this one actually now, because they're in white, so that's two garrison lost. Mm. 
And then we have this boat here. Rolls four dice. He needs a six or higher. And no hit. Lucky me. Okay, so now I get to defend. And this one can't fire on anyone because there's no one in red. These guns can fire at them. So I will with one dice. I need a four or higher. And roll two so it's a miss. This one on these guys here. And he needs also a four or higher. He rolls a six. And to hit, I need to roll a three or higher. I roll a four. So that good that means that ship is on fire i spend a fuel to launch my wildcat desperately here trying to do something and it's not looking too good to be quite frank so then we have the wildcat phase which is done and the recovery phase so this ship here retreats the emperor's disgrace box so i still need to take out one ship or make one ship retreat to actually finish the first uh, uh, invasion attempt. Decrease the fires to smoke and the smokes to nothing. And that is the end of that turn. Okay, we roll two dice for the discovery phase. And it's a one. So it's only one marker and it's ammo. Japanese movement phase. Roll a four. So they go here. And roll a four again. So they go here. A six, lucky me, they go here. And transporter, a four, so he goes, see here, he goes here. And the last ship, a five, so he goes over here. Okay, so we have a total value of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can't fall below seven or it's gonna be lost by the end of the game. Uh, but for, you know, they get to fire first, so. Very likely I am going to be below 7. So these guys will fire 2. They need only a uh, 3 or higher. They can throw 4 dice. And we have 2 hits. 5 and 6. So 6 is going to be this. And 3, sorry, 3 and 6. And 3 is going to be the airfield. There's no airplane, so I lose 1 garrison. And that ship. 3 dice, 3 or higher. Oh, lucky roll for me. Good job, Marines. Marines with civilians. And these guys get to roll six dice together. Four or higher to hit. And only one hit. Wow. I am proud of my boys. The roll of five. So, ammo dump is hit. And finally, this guy here with four dice. Five or higher. I see a red one. Ah, oh, that's two hits. That's too bad. And it's four and one. So... The guns and the fuel depot. So I'm down to nine now. So here's my chance now to actually do something. I think it's going to be possible because we have the wildcat. But let's see what happens. So this ship fires at... Um, it's no time to be greedy, I guess. So let's take out the PBs. So he fires one. He needs a roll of three or higher. <laughs> Rolls a two. These far as the PB as well. He needs a uh, 3 or higher. He rolls a 6. So on a uh, 2 or higher, he hits. Otherwise, it's a loss. He rolls a 4, so it's a hit. So he goes directly to the Emperor's Glory Box. And I send my Wildcat against the PB. He gets to roll 2 dice in defense. A 6 removes 1 combat value. A 5 and a 2. So he does not defend. So I get to roll 2 dice. A uh, 2 or higher is a hit. And roll a 1 and a 3. So the 3 is a hit. And he goes to the Emperor's uh, glory box. Whew. Okay, that was a close, 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 close call. We're now at the carnage phase. Which is called where you, uh, you know, remove the stuff. And since we have a more, 6 or more of these. What's going to happen now is we're going to start the second invasion attempt. So before you start your second invasion attempt, what you're going to do is you're going to remove all of the fire and smoke markers from the game. You're going to put all of the ships here in the Emperor's Disgrace box. And you put like the divisions in one stack, which are, you know, this is the only one that's in a division. Because these are going to be returned by their division. 
later on in the second one. You put all of your available uh, Wildcats in the combat air patrol box and then you mark with something that you have. Let's say we take a janky grit marker, that's usually what I do, and you put that in the box that you reached here because now we know that we're going to get 39 victory points from that. And then you draw the last marker and if it's a ship, which it is now, it's a transport ship, you put it together with, you know, in the Empress Disgrace box. And if it's any marker that goes here, you just simply put it there. So you kind of get, usually, you know, you might just be here on 30 or 31. So you get a nice bonus, you get all your ships to the combat air patrol and you get to remove all fires. So it's kind of nice when you go and end the first invasion attempt. But again, you don't want to do it too soon because you will lose all of the VP here. I kind of played it a little bit, you know, I pushed my luck. If I would have been lucky, I would have removed those ships, the, the strong ones, but I couldn't hit them. I couldn't get them and I pushed my luck too far. I have lost way too much. I still might be able to redeem myself, but with the minus 20 VP from civilians draft, I don't really like to see that happening.